All right. Um, so while we're trying to get things rearranged in the living room for a set for my main channel and for this one as well, um, I had heard about this yesterday and I wanted to do a video about it when I got home. And it's been delayed till now uh, by other things that I had to talk about. Uh, Bobby Heenan. Bobby Heenan uh, was the greatest manager in the history of professional wrestling. He was the greatest color commentator in the history of professional wrestling. To this day, when I'm watching old WWE, WWF, or even WCW videos, um, if he's on commentary, I laugh guaranteed almost every match. He was insightful. He was brilliant. Uh, he wasn't called Bobby the Brain by accident. He was ahead of the game. He could make you hate anybody. I think he could get pretty much anybody over. Um, if you're trying to make a guy, put him up against somebody in the Heenan family. Have Bobby Heenan smack talk him for a while. And you're set. Um... I mean, there have been exceptions. I remember when Ken Patera came back and Heenan did his best to get Patera over as this big hero and by being horrible to him. But, uh, it you know, it had middling results. But that wasn't Heenan's fault. Heenan's a guy that I, I, I look at and, and I say, this is what wrestling should be. Um, you look at, in WWE right now, the only example I can find is Paul Heyman with Brock Lesnar. Brock can't talk. <coughs> Brock can't sound threatening on the microphone. He doesn't have the voice for it. So, you stick him with a mouthpiece like Paul. You just you allow Brock Lesnar to just be the beast incarnate. Suplex City. And Paul can come up with all of the catchphrases on his own. He can turn the crowd in his favor. He can turn the crowd against him. He can do it on a whim. He knows how to play the crowd. And it is a lost art. When you look at, for instance, uh, Roman Reigns is the good example. They did push Reigns too fast, but Reigns' mic skills weren't able to keep up with some of the guys he was against. And he'd come up with a phrase that kind of got over with the crowd. You WWE fans know what I'm talking about. And it would kind of work. Like the, the Fruit Loop kind of kind of kind of comment. And it, it and then it would just work the one time, but they'd still go back to it. It's like, hey, they like this thing Roman said. And I say they because everything in WWE is heavily scripted. And it makes it harder to buy the promos when everything is so heavily scripted. And I remember an age when they were scripted, but the wrestlers and the talent still had more control. I think where WWE's kind of fallen in the last few years is they've got so many writers and so much bureaucracy and so many things going on that it's really hard for the average wrestler to know okay what am i doing tonight who am i what's going on and then when a wrestler feels that way it's going to be picked up on by the crowd bobby heenan would come out whether it was at the start of the show the middle of the show or the end of the show and he would convince you that his segment was the most important segment of the night and his wrestler whoever was behind him whether it was king kong bundy whether it was harley race whether it was haku didn't matter this guy was the guy you needed to hate this guy was the guy you needed to be worried about. This was the guy who was going to beat up your hero, your, your fan favorite. This guy was going to be a beast. And when he lost, he'd, he'd flip out, he'd lose it. He wouldn't flip out on the wrestler unless they were trying to turn that wrestler face again or for the first time. And there's nothing that could turn you into a fan favorite faster than punching Bobby Heenan or hitting Bobby Heenan. And Heenan would take the odd bump here and there, but... A lot of us didn't know, especially in the 80s, that Heenan couldn't. Due to injuries suffered when he was a, a full-time professional wrestler, he had to become a manager because he, he couldn't take the bumps. Uh, there's a famous clip online of Heenan uh, swearing at a WCW wrestler who hit him in the back of the neck. Um, you know, And the F-bomb got out in live air. I, I don't blame Heenan. Um, and, and Heenan and WCW always seemed a little bit off. Uh, I don't think he was ever fully comfortable there the way he was in WWF with Gorilla Monsoon. If you're able to dig up, you know, a, a whole slew of Bobby Heenan footage, and I know there's some great Bobby Heenan one-liners and great Bobby Heenan quotes, 
and there's some videos on YouTube with that. Um, if you haven't heard him and you're wondering, what's he talking about? Just look up Bobby Heenan. Just look up his best quotes, his best moments, all the best things he's done. And I'm telling you, the guy was so good at what he did for so long. And I have nothing but respect for him and for what he did. And his passing is truly something lost because what he brought to the ring, what he brought to the company, and just how epic he could make everything feel is something that professional wrestling desperately needs right now. It desperately needs to feel like it's important, like it's epic. Not like, oh, this is the eighth time in three weeks these guys have fought each other. I think I'm going to go get myself something to drink. Or this is a good time to go get a snack because I don't really care. Or let's just find out what's on another channel. There's a lot of that that goes on. And you're never going to get the numbers back, like added to your numbers. But it does. it's not an excuse for being lazy. And there are times where wrestling writing is really, really lazy lately. And it's really hard to watch. And again, guys like Roman get caught in that. Where it's just, oh, he's big. And he's strong. So the fans will love him. He's got that look too. The fans will love him. No. You, you have to give fans a reason. And Bobby Heenan always gave you a reason to hate the guys he was in the ring with. He gave you a reason to hate him. And you watched as guys chased him around the ring trying to trying to punch him, and you wanted them to get punched so badly that when it finally happened, remember Andre the Giant turning against Bobby Heenan at WrestleMania? Andre went into that ring as a villain, and he came out of that ring as the number one hero again. And it was it's moments like that that Heenan could create with his ability to make people hate him. And I don't see anybody in WWE now other than Paul Heyman who's able to just turn the fans like that. The only other guy in wrestling who I think is capable of doing that as a manager or in that kind of capacity without being a physical wrestler would be um, Jim Cornette. And Cornette gets uh, ridiculed a lot for the fact that he's, he's kind of rambling a lot. But he's really funny and he's really insightful sometimes. You know, he can go over over the top, but he's fun to listen to. And he can make you hate wrestlers, too. So, you know, we'll see what happens from here if, if at some point WWE goes back to that kind of thing. You need managers. You need mouthpieces. Not every wrestler is going to be uh, eloquent. Not every wrestler can cut promos like a John Cena or The Rock. Some guys need that mouthpiece to get over. And Heenan could get, uh, could get anybody over. So let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. And thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.